Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at the Austro-Hungarian M95 bayonet. Now these were made to fit the 8mm Munlika M95 straight pull rifle. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different variations of that rifle and nearly all of them took this bayonet except for the carbine variation. But that was rectified mid-World War One, and they were um, either modified or made new to uh, take bayonets. Now, these bayonets were made by a number of different um, countries and companies. So, in Austria, they were made by OEWG, which is now Steyr. In uh, Hungary, they were made by FEG. In uh, Czech Republic, uh, so the vast majority of these were made in uh, Austria and uh, Hungary. And very small numbers were made in Czech Republic and Germany. And in Czech Republic, they are made by Moravian Steelworks, uh, or MO. And in Germany, they are made by a couple of different manufacturers in um, Zollingen, town very, very famous for uh, knife making, bayonet making, or any kind of uh, edged weapon or even armour, I believe, going back to like the 14th century. Uh, that said, these were used like all over the world by many, many different countries, or not so much all over the world, but all throughout uh, Eastern Europe. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple other countries manufactured their own variations as well, but they would be quite obscure. Uh, the thing about these bayonets is um, it's a very, very big uh, topic to um, jump into because so many countries made these, used these. There's so many different markings you can find on them so many different modifications. Um, I am definitely not an expert. Um, I've done a, a fair bit of research and reading and this is sort of the best I've come up with and I reckon I've got maybe 60% you know, of the knowledge out there but there's um, plenty more to the story of this bayonet that goes well and truly beyond my understanding. Now, uh, they were in service from uh, 1895 until uh, 1949 but saying they're in service, they're used in so many different countries in uh, you know, different times, like uh, Austria had them in service from 1895 until 1938. In 1938, uh, Austria has been taken over by Germany and uh, Germany starts issuing uh, car 98 Ks or Mausers. And um, these uh, bayonets and rifles were sent to places like Bulgaria and Romania and rearish roles in Italy, Yugoslavia and hell even Germany, probably a couple stayed in service in their home countries as well. And then the uh, the Hungarian, these are both Hungarian, I should probably lead with that. I've got the Austrian flag up because I don't have a Austro-Hungarian flag. I don't even have a Hungarian flag, so it's the most appropriate, but bear with me. Uh, in Hungary, I believe they stayed in service for some time from, again, 1895 until um, the 1940s, and then... As I said, these are issued to a whole bunch of countries, you know, Bulgaria, Romania, Italy, Yugoslavia, Germany, and um, when they were done with them, when self-loading rifles started being introduced, uh, they were, again, on sold to places all around the world. Um, the Model 1895 stroke pull rifles still in use today in Africa, so I wouldn't be surprised if these bayonets are still floating around in service somewhere. But uh, these bayonets themselves, they... Uh, were introduced to replace the model of 1888. So the 1895 was an update on the 1888 and just came with a slightly different bayonet, pretty much the same, very, very similar. Uh, what's interesting about these bayonets is, um, well, for starters, it's a knife bayonet. So the whole world, well, not the whole world, but Germany and Austria and Switzerland and a couple of those countries had started moving towards uh, knife bayonets from saber or sword bayonets. And that really only started in um, 1884. So the knife bayonet was a very, very recent introduction. And from my understanding, this is the first bayonet or sort of this series of bayonets, the 86, 88 and the 95, were the first bayonets to have an inverted blade. So as you can see, when you hold it, the blade runs along the top and not along the bottom. Uh, they wouldn't be the last because the uh, the Czechs became pretty fond of that with their VZ series of bayonets, the 22, 23, 24. But that's a cool little thing. And um, as you can see here, this one up here has a hook quillen. And you might not be able to tell, but there's actually a little hole in the pommel. Whether this one doesn't have a hole in the pommel. 
So the reason for that is this is actually a officer NCO bayonet. And uh, what's essentially different is this hole would accommodate a uh, ring, which I don't have. Um, I'll put the photo up so you can see. And that ring supports the base of a trottle, which is like um, a little pom-pom kind of thing. I don't know what to really call it. Or a property or a yeah, trottle. And um, the trottle would be worn ceremonially and um, it would uh, wrap around the hook and uh, yeah, just hang there. But the um, this style of bayonet is just sort of like a, a show of rank, essentially. Uh, if you know any more about it, please comment below because I'm a bit hopeless. But um, I might just jump into the construction of the actual bayonet itself. I already discussed it a little bit. So we've got our inverted blade along the true edge, uh, spine with a slight false edge, nice big square fuller. Now squared fullers are what you find on the Hungarian M95, so Austrian ones have a circular round fuller. So instead of a, a square cut, it'll be round at the edges and round the whole way through. And uh, as I said, both Hungarian. Moving down to the cross guard, we've got our two rivets retaining it. Now, I've been told that they all have those two rivets, and this one here has likely had its rivets polished off. Uh, that's what I was told. Looking at it really close, I can't see any sign that rivets were over here, so I don't know if maybe some were made without rivets, but that's what I've got. Uh, they're just um, wooden grips. You can't remove the, um, the grips. There's no, no screws. They're like riveted in there. And um, nice small pommels with the big generous push button. So inside the mortise here, the catch, which connects to the bayonet, it's actually quite large and gives you a really good uh, locking surface there. And moving down to the scabbards, uh, these scabbards are really, really well made. Um, probably my favorite scabbard, steel constructed scabbards for the time period. They're certainly the most solid. They're very, very durable. Uh, it's just better constructed than a lot of the others you find that are, look very similar. But we've got a screw either side of the mouth, retaining the mouth and the uh, mouth spring. Uh, and then just a uh, frog stud here, ball finale at the bottom, and no drainage hole. Put my bayonet back in. Seems to be unidirectional, it only uh, wants to go in one way. I mean, it will go in the other way, but it's not a great fit. Uh, so it, it likes going into the scabbard in uh, one direction. Now, a lot of these scabbards, I'm hesitant to say all, but quite a few that I've come across, uh, and from what I've read, were initially painted like an olive green when they were issued or they were in service. I don't know if that was done in theater, I don't know if that was done in factory, I don't know if that was only specific units or specific soldiers, but, um, I've come across that many that it had to have been some kind of uh, formal modification or maybe even straight out of the factory. But you find these with um, just a nice olive green paint all over them. I'd love to get my hands on one. Actually, I need another scabbard because I'm missing one for this one, which is a bit sad for me. Now, markings for these is where I start to become a little bit unstuck because... Um, there's some very, very sort of common markings and there's a whole bun bunch of really niche and uncommon ones and I won't get into those because I don't have too much of an understanding but I'll, I'll try to keep it nice and simple. Now, I'll go through the Austrian and then the Hungarian. Oh, you know what, I'll do them together. So, the markings you'll find on these, this one's better marked, so we'll use this as an example. On uh, one side of the Ricasso, you'll have your manufacturer's mark. So here we've got FGGY for FEG, for uh, Austrian manufactured. If this was made in um, uh, Austria instead of Hungary, then that would be OEWG. And if it was made in Czech Republic, it would be uh, MO. And if it was made in Germany, you'd have your, your typical German manufacturer marks where you'd have your company name at the top and then Zollingen down the bottom being the, the town where it's manufactured. Or maybe Saul if it's made in Saul. On the reverse, uh, this isn't a great example. From what I've read, this is where you'll find your Imperial Eagle or your Habsburg Eagle, which is the Austro-Hungarian. Uh, but there are a couple other little marks you can come across. I don't think that's a Habsburg Eagle there, so maybe you can 
if you know what that is, help me out. Maybe that's a Hungarian mark for post-World War One. I. I don't know. And um, I have seen a whole bunch of other different markings on this spot on the Ricasso. I've seen like a yin-yang kind of thing, which is a uh, marking that's been reworked in Czech Republic after World War One by a specific company. And there's a whole bunch of different markings you can come across. This is territory where it becomes, you know, <laughs> very technical and... Um, there's probably books out there that I haven't come across them yet, but there's a whole bunch of collectors who get well and truly into it and um, small uh, markings, you know, they, they sell for an absolute premium on some of these really rare uh, M95s in Europe, but down here in Australia, I don't know a terrible lot about them. Now down on the cross guard, I initially thought this was a serial number or maybe a unit number, but apparently these are in inventory numbers, so like rack numbers or something like that. And as you can see here, it's it's pretty crude. So while this is very nice uh, stamped, this is like electro penciled in. And then this one doesn't have it, but on the pommel, you'll find your unit marking. So you'll have like a number and a regiment or whatever, like, you know, 47 regiment or something like that. Um, they don't all have it. I've seen a couple of examples that do, and I'll chuck a photo up as a, a demo. Uh but I'm sure you can come across a lot more markings than what I've got here. Uh, usually you'll also have a manufacturer's marking here on the frog stud. This one doesn't have that. Um, I think it's either worn off or it was never there. I've given it a good clean with steel wool. Uh, Four zero grit steel wool, so I'm not damaging it. And nothing's come up, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. But that's where you'll find your OEWG or your um, FGGY. I imagine it's just going to be a, a FEG manufacturer because that's what this bayonet is. Um, this one here, I've, I've had this one for a long time and I got this uh, super cheap and um, even though all the markings are pretty much gone, like a little bit of the Habsburg Eagle there, and you can't really make out anything on the reverse. Even though all the markings are kind of worn off, it's probably one of my favourite bayonets. I love the, um, the old relic condition ones. I've got... Um, Initials carved in the uh, the handle there, R-E-D, red. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I love the old beaten up ones. Like, don't get me wrong, I love my um, as new, unissued as well, but that's more for understanding what they initially looked at looked like. I love the, uh, the relic condition ones that have been dug up from battlefields or have sustained some kind of damage. Um, I think that's uh, really, really cool. Anyway, guys, I hope I've done these uh, some kind of justice. Um, I'm definitely no <laughs> authority or expert on these. I was a little hesitant to, or I put this video off for a little while, making this video, because um, there's just a very steep learning curve and I, I don't have the knowledge to do these justice um, compared to a lot of the other bayonets I have. So I hope you enjoyed. If I've made any mistakes, feel free to correct me. Uh, if you know anything, anything else that's um, pretty cool or pretty interesting or you have some cool markings on uh, one of your own, please comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.